So welcome everybody to my session around sharing good language teaching practice in the new normal. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, I'm very grateful to the organizers at Be Belt to give me this opportunity. So my name's Joe Dale. I'm a former languages teacher. I taught French for 13 years, uh, three years at secondary school level, and then 10 years at middle school level, nine to 13 year olds uh, on the Isle of Wight, which is where I live. And I've lived here for over 20 years. So I've got upper primary and secondary school experience. Uh, for the last uh, 11, 12 years or so, I've been an independent languages consultant, and I normally travel around the world running training on the use of technology and how it can enhance language learning, as well as across the curriculum. But um, of course, as a result of the pandemic, I've had to do nearly all my uh, work via webinars, although I am starting to do a few things face to face as well, which is fantastic. I hope everyone is is safe and well where you are, and I really hope that you find this session useful. I'm going to be talking for about 45 minutes uh, or so. And I'll be sharing the whole presentation with you. My uh, Twitter handle is on the screen, as you can see, at Joe Dale. I've got over 33,000 followers now. Um, if you'd like to follow me, if you're not already, and you'd um, I'd like to do that, then you'd be more than welcome. I'm more than happy to retweet any questions you might have as well. Or you can send me a direct message if you'd like to about anything which I'll be talking about today. Uh, my email address is joedale at talk21.com. So likewise, you can send me an email if you would like. So the idea of this presentation is to be sharing good practice uh, around uh, the teaching and learning that has been happening in UK schools amongst language teachers teaching uh, French, German, Spanish, etc. But lots of the ideas will be replicable in the uh, ELT classroom as well. So this will give you a flavour of the sorts of things I'll be talking about in the next 45 minutes. You can see that there are lots of ideas there. Uh, there may be some tools that you've heard of already, which is fantastic. Um, but I'm sure I'll be teaching you some new ideas as well, in addition to the ones which you are seeing right now. So let's get into it because we don't have lots and lots of time. So first of all, I wanted to talk about the uh, the Tilt webinar series, which I put together along with my friend Helen Myers, who's the chair of the London branch of the Association for Language Learning in the UK. So back in March 2020, we both sort of came together and made the decision that would be a good idea to put a series of webinars together around technology and language teaching. And there the idea of the Tilt webinars was born. And since the start of the pandemic, we've organized over 140 different webinars, all of which are available for free via my YouTube channel, which is Joe Dale 100, 100 as in the figures. And if you also do a search for um, ALL London webinars, then you'll go to the ALL London website. And if you uh, go to the webinar section, there you'll see all the archives of all the recordings that have happened so far, plus uh, the presentations, if the presenter has been kind enough to share that as well. And in most cases, the chat as well that was happening in Zoom. Uh, we haven't stopped doing the, the webinars. There's still ones um, happening in the future. This one happening uh, this month, for example. And uh, you'd be more than welcome to come along. It is, it, uh, they normally run at eight o'clock in the evening, uh, UK time. Um, so do, uh, do come along if you fancy doing that. You can see on the screen, I've just got a couple of examples here. These are ones particularly focusing on, on Microsoft tools. So we have different teachers uh, here talking about <coughs> talking about. Um, different types of uh, Microsoft tools that they've used, for example, uh, using Class Notebook or setting up Microsoft Teams or um, uh, creating Microsoft Forms for formative assessment and so on and so forth. So there really is something for everybody uh, here. We've got ideas around Google tools. We've got lots and lots of third party tools. And we have teachers from literally all over the world who've been doing these Tilt webinars. So do check them out because it's uh, hours and hours of free professional development for you. OK. Uh, also, as a result of the pandemic, uh, there have been some amazing teachers that decided to set up different Facebook groups. This one was set up by Jen O'Reilly Turner uh, back at the beginning of the, of the pandemic. As you can see, it's called Teaching MFL with Teams, MFL standing for Modern Foreign Languages. And it has over 5,000 members now. So if you are working in a school with uh, Office 365, I'd really encourage you not only to check out the, the different um, postings that are there, but also to ask questions yourself. And you will find a very rich resource of different information around uh, using um, Office 365 in the classroom uh, to teach um, uh, languages. So something really, really useful for everyone. The equivalent uh, for Google, Google Classroom, is this one, Google Classroom for MFL Teachers, a Facebook group, which was set up by Samantha Broom. Uh, again, at the beginning of the pandemic, there are uh, 3,000 members of this community and again, uh, a real rich resource for different ideas around using Google tools. And, you know, there, there are no silly questions. You can ask any question you want. 
and you'll get uh, some lovely people helping you. And in lots of ways, I think this is one of uh, the um, the silver linings of the pandemic, the way in which we've all come together and we've been helping uh, different people out. And that's, in a way, what this presentation is all about, showcasing good work. OK, so the first tool we're going to have a look at is Flipgrid. Uh, if you haven't heard of Flipgrid before, it's a really useful free tool, which was acquired by Microsoft a few years ago. And it's very useful for asynchronous speaking practice. So particularly if you've had lots of uh, lockdowns or you're finding it difficult to uh, practice speaking, then Flipgrid is a great way in which you can encourage the students to take part on any device that they have. Flipgrid works on all devices. Um, and when they get access to a, a good enough internet connection, it will be absolutely fine from that point of view. So the principal idea around Flipgrid is that you have different grids, which are referred to um, as topics. You have groups, which are like classes. So you create your different grids. You ask a question in the target language. Uh, which appears as your first video, and then you encourage the students who are part of your your group to respond to your question in a topic and to answer in the target language. You can also create what are called Flipgrid Shorts, which are sort of standalone videos, which are not part of any particular group or topic. So top left, we have Jane Bassnett, who's the head of languages at Downhouse School in the south of England in the UK, and she's also in charge of e-learning in her school as well. She works in Microsoft Showcase School, and you can see in her video example there on the left hand side, you've got a Jane uh, appearing in the video. You've also got a graphic as well. And you've got the fact that she's annotating over the top. So it's a multimodal approach. And by doing that, she's able to explain a grammar point. She can then share that link with her students and they can then watch that video as many times as they need to as a way of uh, giving them an idea of, of the of the grammar that they're going to be covering in the lesson. As a result of that, that will then free up more time for them to then do interactive uh, activities. So it's a, it's a type of flip learning model, if you like. Uh, Jane, also on the right hand side there, she's taken a screenshot of a PowerPoint looking at some some grammar again. In this case, uh, how to form the perfect tense using être in French. She, she's got the screenshot, she's annotating and she's recording her voice at the same time. And then again, she's making that available to different students uh, in her class. Uh, bottom left, you've got a video from Sam Carey, that's K-A-R-Y, who is an educator from the States, and he has an amazing YouTube channel called The New EdTech Classroom, which I would really encourage you to check out. Um, this particular video that he made is called How to Teach Remotely with Flipgrid, but he's made many, many other videos which um, uh, are very useful if you're looking for step-by-step -step guides. And then bottom right, we've got Jess from Flipgrid, just going through some of the ways in which you can use Flipgrid in the classroom, for example, for using a whiteboard or a blackboard for stop motion animation, for screen recording, and so on and so forth. So I think that's a really, really sort of nice little start there. On the right-hand side here, this is Sam Carey again. And uh, here he's done a video clip around assigning work with topics and groups. And on the left-hand side, you've got a video from Mike Tolson, who is prolific on the use of uh, technology, Microsoft technologies. He works in the education department for Microsoft. And in this particular video, he talks about how you can uh, give feedback via text comments in addition to video responses. You can also moderate videos as well. You'll be pleased to hear. And you can have what are called mic only videos, which means you don't appear at all on the video. You just appear with a white background with a blue circle and a white pulsating uh, microphone inside it. So there are lots of ways in which you can make it as safe as possible to use this type of uh, type of tool in the classroom. Uh, top uh, left here, I've got a little screenshot from a tweet that was taken back in April of 2020 uh, from a school in the Middle East, whereby they were talking about how Flipgrid can encourage community of confidence. I, I think that lots of tools which are to do with speaking, digital tools which are to do with speaking, are very useful for uh, promoting confidence amongst students because of the fact that you have this idea of being able to re-record as many times as you need to, which encourages risk-taking. It can build confidence, as I've said. And it's just a great way of being able to have evidence of speaking work. So it doesn't just sort of go off in the in the ether. You can use it uh, as a way of promoting uh, speaking work using Flipgrid as well as other uh, tools, which I'll be talking about later on today. So that's really lovely to see. You've also got the fact that you can now do screen recording in Flipgrid. And I'll talk about more of that in a moment. And also the fact that you have a Chrome extension, Chrome, a Chrome extension and a Microsoft Edge extension with Flipgrid, which means you can record your video straight within the browser if you want to. So on the next slide, this is an example of uh, how you can use the Google Earth uh, function, I feel lucky, um, which allows you to basically go anywhere that you want in the world. And you can also uh, capture that as an animated GIF, which is what I've done in this example. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually show you live how this works. So the idea is that you can be recording your screen using Flipgrid while you are 
traveling anywhere uh, around the world and asking the students to tell you where exactly that you're going. So here, as you can see, we have the, the Google Earth here. I'm now going to click here, which is the I'm feeling lucky uh, option. And that means I'm literally going to go anywhere in the world. Let's see what happens right now. So it so happens I'm going to Denmark, to an island in Denmark. So I could be saying to the students, OK, what can you see? Uh, you can see an island. You can see the sea here. Uh, you can see um, uh, some green fields and so on and so forth. And then what you can do is you can drag the little uh, man here and we can see whether we can go into Google Street View. So it so happens we're going into Google Street View. Sometimes if the place is very remote, it says that the Street View is not available. So now, again, I can ask the students, what can they see? So they can see some fields. They can see some trees. We can move around. They can see some bushes uh, and so on and so forth. So this is in Denmark. We're now going to go somewhere else. So I'm going to click the I'm feeling lucky again. And this time we're going to go to uh, Greece, to another island, it so happens. OK, so we're going to another island. And again, you could ask them to describe it. Let's see if there's any Street View data here. Let's see. Yes, we're going in again. That's amazing. So now we're going here. Um, so two rural places so far. Perfect. Right. So we're now uh, we're on a ferry, I think. We're on a ferry. So you could be saying, OK, where's that person looking? What are these people doing here? Uh, where have they been? How do they feel? What's the weather like? And so on and so forth. We we'll just go to one other place. And now we're going to England. OK, fantastic. So in England, we're going to a Royal Liverpool Golf Club. Um, so again, you could describe what you can see. So I, I can see some houses. I can see a field. I can see um, a, a pitch here. And then from there, we can then go straight into Google Street View. Ah, oh, interesting. It says there's no Street View available for this one. So let's go um, somewhere else. Let's see if that's no, not at all. So that's perfect. That just shows you how you can't guarantee there will be Street View data uh, available. So that's how that works. A type of web quest, but but you're recording your screen in Flipgrid using the inbuilt functionality and then saving it to the topic and then asking the students maybe to replicate the, uh, themselves uh, doing the same thing however you want to do it. So this little animated GIF gives you a flavor of how that works. OK, uh, when you're setting up your groups in Flipgrid, uh, they have to be private. I know it says public there. That's because this is an older screenshot. But when you're creating these, uh, you need to make sure, uh, well, all the all the groups by default are private. You then have to either add um, the students via an email address, which has to be a student Google or Microsoft email address from the domain. Uh, in the school, or you can get them to use uh, a username. You can set these up uh, for them if you want to. You can also upload a CSV file with all the information uh, there to add your students. So it doesn't take that much time to set up the different groups. And if you click on the link there, it will give you some instructions on how to do that. Here are, are a couple of articles around the integration of Microsoft Teams with Google Classroom and Flipgrid. You'll notice that when you uh, go into uh, Flipgrid, there's always, when you share anything, there's always the Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams uh, integration. Uh, you can also use the uh, the roster or the classes in Google Classroom when you're signing up, and it just makes it very, very simple to then add all your students all in one go. Or you can add them via a CSV file if you would like. So the links, uh, I think, there you'll find useful. Officially, you should have a consent form uh, for Flipgrid, so you should get parental consent if you're going to be using Flipgrid with uh, students under the age of 18. Uh, and here's the official consent form that you can then download from the uh, the website from this uh, presentation as well. And then also, I'm, when I'm asked about how um, Flipgrid deals with data, I've provided this uh, web page as well. So you can see exactly how Flipgrid um, have put together a policy around how they deal with educator and student personal data, which is always very important uh, to have a look at. This is the, the mic only option I was talking about. Again, I've made this using um, a GIF. What I've done is I've done this on my iPad. I've recorded my screen using the default screen recording option in iOS. I've then taken that video, put it into an app called Image Play, which is IMG. PLAY, which is a free iOS and Android app, which allows me to export that video as an animated GIF and then put it into my presentation. So you can see how this works. You click on the three dots. You click the mic only option. You can then record without appearing on the screen and uh, have your video then appear within the uh, topic uh, of your choice. And that's how that works. OK. Let's carry on. This is a tutorial that I did for Quartisol, which is a uh, Queensland-based a TESOL uh, organization. Uh, I've done a couple of webinars for them um, last year, 
and this one was looking at formative assessment ideas and about um, 50 percent of it the second half of it is particularly looking at flipgrid so if you want a sort of step-by-step -step guide on how to use flipgrid in the the languages classroom then do check that one out for your own pleasure it's important. okay the next one we're going to have a look at is called Quicker Conversations. And I'm going to do this one live. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the quicker.education website. This is a little bit like Flipgrid, but it particularly looks at how you can use this uh, for speaking. And there's two ways of using uh, Quicker. You can either use it for individual feedback. So you can, for example, print off uh, a PDF of QR codes. You can then assign um, an audio, a piece of audio to a particular QR code. And then you can then uh, cut up the, uh, the the copy that you've printed off, um, stick it in a, a in a student's exercise book or on a wall display in order to um, promote student voice. Or obviously, you can use it as a teacher to give feedback to students. So you simply go through, you click on the uh, print QR code stickers, and it's all very self-explanatory. But what I'm going to show you today uh, is the option of creating what's called a quicker conversation. So I'm going to click on this right now. I could put in a, a title and a tag here to help me organize my content, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to click record right now and show you how it works. OK, so I'm recording my voice right now. This is Quicker Conversations. It's completely free to use. It was designed by a science teacher in uh, the UK, in the southwest of England. And you can record for um, as long as you want to. And the audio is kept for up to three months. If you want to keep it for longer than that, then you um, have to pay um, about two pounds per month, uh, which is very, very inaccessible, uh, very accessible, I mean. Um, but you can also right click the audio player and download the audio directly, which means you permanently got it. So I've now made my recording and I'm now going to click stop. OK, so I've, I've made my recording. I can delete my audio if I want to. I can play it back. I can re-record it. I can also upload some audio if I wanted to from um, something that I sent edited, first of all, for example, in Audacity. Uh, if I want to keep my audio permanently, I can right click the player and I can click Save Audio As and download the audio to my uh, PC, for example. OK, now I can now take a photo if I wanted to um, to have a visual prompt. I could add some text as instructions. I could add a web link and I can also get rid of the uh, multimedia options, which I don't want to appear on the screen. So you can see that all I'm going to have when I share this link with my students is um, the microphone appearing, which is perfect. So as a result of that, um, that would just make life easier. Now, I'm going to also turn on moderation. And I'm now going to click on start your quick conversation. So I'll, I'll then show you how this works. OK, now um, what I'm going to do now is, um, well, normally, if I was in, say, um, a session with lots of other people, I could copy the link like this, right click, copy. I could paste it in the chat, but I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to launch this uh, QR code extension, which I have, and I'm going to scan this with my iPad, and that will allow me to access the link straight on my iPad, and it means I can now make a recording, and you'll see on my screen, hopefully, that, oh, maybe not. Let me just turn that around again. Let's see if you can see it. You can maybe see that. No, you can't see that very well just because of how it's sorted out. Anyway, you have to just believe me that there's a blue circle with a white microphone on it on the screen. And I'm now going to press that and make a little recording like this. So I'm going to press record and then allow my microphone access. And then here we go. We're recording. OK, so the idea is once the teacher has asked the question in the target language, you can then, uh, as a class, all record your different answers and they'll all appear in the one thread. Or you could use this for practicing a dialogue whereby a student um, had created the first line of the dialogue, shared it with another student. They would then record the second line, the first student would record the, first, uh, the third line, then the fourth line, then the fifth line, and so on and so forth. So it would be back and forth recording a dialogue by using quicker conversations, a little bit like Flipgrid, but um, simpler and easy to set up in lots of ways. So having finished recording, I'm going to press stop. And there it is. And you'll see now on the screen uh, in a moment that my audio recording will now appear because on my screen it says response awaiting approval. That's perfect. So you can see now how uh, moderation works. I could now press play if I wanted to and listen back to this. Um, I can click approve or delete. If there was any sort of inappropriate content there, I could click delete. Uh, I don't have to click approve because um, I'm the only person who's going to be able to listen to this as the teacher. So everyone could um, reply to my uh, question and I could choose whether I approve it or not. If I don't approve it, I can still listen to it and download it. 
and that would mean that the, the, the students would not be able to listen to each other's if they didn't want um, if you didn't want them to do that. Well, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to click approve, and there we are, and we've done it. So now um, I would uh, ask other students to then also record, and they would also appear um, on my um, on my page here. Once you've uh, finished um, the recording, you simply click the padlock option here and you click lock conversation. That means nobody else can now add to that recording and you're, you're good to go. So that's a quick introduction to Quicker. And if I carry on onto the next slide, there's actually a, a video tutorial here to go through exactly what I've just shown you, but I've just shown you that live, so that's fine. Um, on this page, here are some examples of different language teachers showing how this particular uh, tool can be used. So, for example, uh, top left, we've got Karen Longman here, uh, who is um, working in a school in Monaco, in the International School of Monaco. And she is um, working in a one-to-one in -a -one iPad uh, school. So it means that she's using Pages, which is the equivalent of uh, Google Docs or Microsoft Word. And she's using quicker conversations or, or the, um, the individual quicker QR code in order to uh, create a listening comprehension whereby she's getting the students to practice their listening grammar and thinking skills. You then have uh, got Invercad MFL there, uh, who is Sarah Bell from Inverclad um, Academy up in Scotland near Glasgow. And she's using Quicker for live marking. So using her voice as an as a alternative to written feedback, that sort of multimodal approach, I think, is really exciting around the use of technology. And then also in Scotland, Turnbull uh, Modern Languages, which is uh, a school uh, in Fife, um, they are using quicker feedback for QR code uh, treasure hunts uh, for dictation and translation races, which is also really useful and interesting, I think. But clearly, you'd have to be uh, COVID secure while doing that. Uh, bottom left, you've got Claire Wilson and then Miss Burke in the middle there at the bottom uh, who are looking at how you can use quicker feedback for speaking homeworks, which I think is uh, fantastic for practicing different languages um, asynchronously in the way that I've uh, shown you already. And then you've got Vincent Everett there, who is using it for voice-to-voice -voice dictation. As you can see, it says they listen and repeat back a bit longer each time until they can do the whole text or summarize it or answer a question, simple, spontaneous responses, not a presentation just like in the classroom, which I just think is, is fabulous. And it just shows how versatile this tool is in lots of ways. I'm now going to give you a quick idea on how you can create your own uh, praise postcard using Quicker as well as with Vokaroo. I'm actually going to focus on Vokaroo here because it's even simpler. I'm sure lots of you know about Vokaroo, but have you tried a digital praise postcard? So I'm going to click on the link here. Don't forget, I'm showing the whole, pre whole presentation with you. And uh, this is an example of a, a template which I've put together uh, based on uh, an example which I found on Twitter, uh, which has been duly credited on the previous slide. Uh, so you can see here, you put the name um, of the student you want to send the praise postcard to, and then you need to record some audio. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, Vokaroo. So I'm going to go to uh, here, and I'm going to go to Vokaroo, like this, Vokaroo.com, and I'm going to record my audio like this. Okay, so I'm recording Vokaroo. Vokaroo allows you to record for as long as you want to. The audio is stored for up to one year. And you can then download it at any time. You can delete the recording if you want. You can share the link via a QR code. Uh, you can download the QR code really simply and easily. So the idea of a praise postcard is you're praising a particular student's work and you're going to then record your voice. So it sounds very you know, personal and, and, um, uh, and it's a great way of giving feedback. And then you're going to send the postcard to the student or to the parents of that student um, so they can all be very proud of how their child has done in that particular piece of work. So I now press stop recording like this. I click save and share. I can uh, copy the link this way. Or in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the QR code. So I click here, save QR code, click save like that. I'll then go back to my praise postcard like this. And I can literally just drag and drop that uh, onto the screen, which is Fantastic. So having done that, I can now rearrange this. If I really wanted to, I could delete the square, the instructions behind, but um, I'm just keeping that as the template at the moment. And then how do I then share it? So what I can do is I can click on the file option. I can click download. I can download this as a PDF and upload it to Microsoft Teams, to OneDrive, to Google Classroom, etc. I can also uh, download this as an image, as a PNG file. Uh, there's a, um, a um, Chrome extension, which I particularly like at the moment, which is called Alice Keeler's uh, Quick Share Screenshot, which you 
uh, connect to your Google Drive. So all you have to do is click here like this, uh, click take partial screen like that. Your cursor becomes across. You can then drag over your uh, the thing that you want to grab, let go. It then uploads to Google Drive. It, it goes into a folder, which is automatically created when you first install the Chrome extension, which is called Quick, um, uh, Quick Share Screenshot. And all you have to do, the first time you do that, you just go to that folder in Drive, you right click it, you click Get Link, and you make it available to anyone in your organization or anyone with the link, which means that when uh, people click on the um, on the link that is pasted to the clipboard automatically, they'll be able to see your image. So if I were now to uh, paste this onto the screen, uh, you'll see what it looks like. If I click here, Paste, uh, there it is. It looks like that. So you can then you could then paste that, for example, into a um, uh, into a chat area in, say, Zoom or in StreamYard, as we're using right now, and it just goes from there. So as a result of having that link, you can then click on that and see the image. So a really easy way of sharing a praise postcard in that way. Okay, let's carry on. Right, in this next example, this is Vincent Everett, who I've just mentioned, who came up with the idea of creating a street view mystery. So he uh, visited virtually uh, the town of Vesoul in France, um, and what he did was he found some interesting things in that particular town that were happening, which he thought were noteworthy. And then he put together a pack of clues, which had written clues in there and also some spoken clues. So he asked people on Twitter uh, as part of the MFL Twitterati community if they could record their voice as if they were playing the role of an old man, an old woman, a young girl, etc. And then he put that all together into uh, this pack, which you can, you can download for free from the link here. So I'm just going to give you a flavor of this right now. Just going to get to the uh, the starting point. There we are. So I'll just quickly uh, go to here. Uh, just give me a second to find the point of the video that I wanted, which is here we are. It's just around here. So I'll just press play. Cat food just left there behind the ground. A bit further. Sorry about this. I thought I had it keyed up to the right place. Uh, just give me a second. Here we are. Here we are. I've got it now. Right. Okay. So here we are. There he is. He, you can click here to bring up the sound, which I've got here. Um, either that or scan on your phone. This QR code will bring up the audio. So if you click here, you'll hear me basically, or someone else, other contributors saying this. The questions underneath are very much there to help you understand. So what is his name? Je suis Henri, there you are. What is behind you? Regardez derrière vous, il y a un peu de fleurs énormes. Okay, so on the one on, on YouTube, I didn't spoil it for you. I didn't turn around and see the big, the big pot of flowers. But when you do this in class, I know from the, the previous Street View Mysteries, there's um, a gasp out loud moment. Sometimes pupils even scream when you turn around and you suddenly see something like an enormous pot of flowers for no apparent reason just sitting there. Okay, so there are some there are some strange things going on in this town. So here's your first chap. There we are. So that's hopefully giving you a flavour of how that works. So uh, Vincent has put together these different clues. You can either read the clues in the target language or listen to them and then uh, try to work out um, the answers to the different clues which are presented in that way. So another interesting way of using quicker, I think. Uh, okay, Edpuzzle is another tool which has proved really popular during the pandemic for listening practice. If you haven't seen Edpuzzle before, it's a free tool which allows you to make a class. Uh, once you've made a class, you can then um, put in different YouTube clips uh, into your class and you can add different questions within those YouTube clips so that when the playhead gets to that point uh, in the video, a question will then appear and the students can't just um, sc uh, scrub to the end. They have to answer all the questions as a result of that, uh, you get some data um, in the in the grade book that the teacher has. There are two types, two types of questions that you can have. You can either have a multiple choice question, which is marked automatically, or a short answer question, which you then, as the teacher, have to go back in afterwards and uh, mark manually. Um, but uh, on this particular page, we've got a tilt webinar there called Harness the Power of Music. That's from Paco Fernandez, who is uh, based in um, Cambridgeshire. And he did a webinar for us back in... Uh, May 2020, whereby he looked at some different tools around promoting um, listening using music. So he looked at, for example, Edpuzzle, but in addition to that, other tools such as Lyrics Training, uh, Spotify, and so on and so forth. And then on the left-hand side, Jane again, 
That's a, um, a screenshot of some data um, from her grade book showing how a student has got 63 out of 100, that they've watched 100% of the video, how many uh, correct answers they got, and so on and so forth. So that's really, really interesting, uh, I think, from the point of view of getting an idea of how to use Edpuzzle. And also Lauren Crawley there, top right, uh, who did a five-minute um, demo of Edpuzzle for an event uh, which Jane organized. So uh, lots of ideas there. This is a tutorial which I put together for the Post-Primary Languages Ireland uh, organization um, last year. And you can see it's all around how to set Edpuzzle up, a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your classes, how to uh, set the different questions and so on and so forth. And also quite recently, I um, helped to organize um, an Edpuzzle webinar involving people from Edpuzzle um, as well as um, Jane Bassnett, who I've mentioned, and Darren White, who is known as Ranga the Trainer on Twitter. And uh, he, well, both of them are, are real experts on how to use Edpuzzle. So there's some some basic um, uh, information there, but there's also information around uh, differentiation and um, other uh, ways of using Edpuzzle for, say, feedback, for example. So really, really useful. If you're into Edpuzzle, do check out that video. Uh, okay. Let's carry on. Wheel of Names is another tool which is great for promoting speaking and writing. Um, as you can see, you've got four different way, uh, different wheels here. Let me just give you a flavor of how this works if you haven't seen this before. So you can put in different uh, random names, for example, and it will then allow you to pick those um, names individually. Uh, and then you can then ask them to do an activity based on the name that comes up. OK, so in this example, John has come up. I could then ask John to answer a question in the target language. So in addition to names, you could write in um, bits of text, for example. You could um, have sentence starters. You could have verbs, uh, lots of different ideas on how you could do this. Now, if I were to make my own, what I would do, this is just the default wheel here. I can now get rid of all of these different items here, and I can start putting in my own text. And you can have as many items as you want to, basically. You can also add an image as well, which is really handy. So I wanted to uh, go to a website such as um, autodraw.com. Then I could uh, draw a picture, as I'm going to be doing right now. As you can see, we've got a cat here. I'm going to show you how to recreate that. So I'm going to choose the color black, and I've got the auto draw icon enabled. So now I'm going to draw very quickly a mouse, sorry, a cat with a mouse, which is not the easiest thing to do, particularly when I'm being recorded live. But you get the idea. Now I'm going to put a couple of eyes. Uh, and there we are. And you can see at the top of the screen, uh, Google, this is a Google tool. Um, they're trying to work out what this scribble is supposed to be. They think it might be a rabbit or a shoe or a leaf. But of course, it's supposed to be a cat. So I click on that. And now it's a cat. I can now resize this if I wanted to uh, like that. I can make it uh, fit exactly where I want it to go. I can also fill it as well with the fill tool. Choose the color like that. Suddenly, I've got a yellow cat. Then to download it, I click here. I click the download option. And I can just download it like that. There we are. And then I can go back to my wheel of names. I can click on the uh, image option, add image like this. I can choose my picture, click open. Now I've got a cat. So I could then you could repeat the same uh, for all the other uh, sections if you wanted to. You can also customize the wheel like this. Uh, you can choose to have it with no sound if you wanted to. You can choose how long it takes to spin. You can choose how many items you want to have, up to a 1,000, which is obviously completely silly. Uh, after spin, you can also have it with no sound if you want to. You can choose not to have confetti. You can also put in um, uh, an expression. Instead of we have a winner, you could write something else if you wanted to. And you can even have an, an image in the middle of your wheel if you wanted to. So hit, you would just click on image at center of the wheel. You click there. You click upload image. You choose your picture of your cat. You click open, and there it is, like that. So you click OK. It now looks like that. And if I want to share this, I can click Share. I can click uh, Continue. I can give it a name like this. Uh, I can click Continue again. I can now copy the link like that, and away we go. OK, so that's um, some, some simple ideas on how you can use Wheel of Names. As you can see, I've got some other examples here. The second wheel, I'm using the keyboard. Um, Emoji keyboard, Chrome extension to add um, different emojis here. So if I click on that, give you a flavor of how that works. I can spin the wheel. And as you can see, one of the uh, uh, three items will come up in one go. And then these are things that I've chosen to put in. I would then expect a student to say a sentence around his cat playing football and reading a book, for example. 
Okay, so that's how that works. And then the uh, third one is just the auto draw idea I've shown you already. And the last one is using Bitmojis uh, to create an activity as well. Uh, if you want to uh, have lots of wheels running at the same time on your screen, then you can use tab resize for that. You can have up to four wheels uh, across the screen, which is really helpful, I think. And if you're into sentence builders, which is a type of um, um, uh, uh, set of columns whereby you choose one item from each column, you can then generate random sentences based on a sentence builder. Wheel of Names is a great way of being able to harness that. So you just spin each wheel so that you get one item per column, and that will then generate a sentence for you. Uh, Wheel of Names, uh, also you can split the screen in the way I've talked about. This is using uh, another uh, Chrome extension. Uh, there's one called uh, Tab Scissors and Tab Glue. Tab Scissors allows you to split the screen and have it in two separate windows. Tab Glue allows you to put them back again. There's also a free Chrome extension called Dualess, which is D-U-A-L-L-E-S-S. Um, and that's, again, Karen Longman talking about using Wheel of Names for practicing verbs, tenses, making sentences, you name it, it does it. And then Jane, again, um, incorporating Wheel of Names within her class notebook, which um, is useful if you're working in a Microsoft environment. A classroom screen is another way in which you can incorporate your Wheel of Names into classroom screen. I'm just going to show you live now how this works. So all I have to do is go to classroom screen like this. Screen.com. It's completely free to have one screen. You just click on launch now like this, and you can then choose uh, your background. If you want to click here, for example, and choose a different background, like, I don't know, this one, for example, there it is. If I want to add in my wheel of names, I click on media, I click embed, I can then paste in the uh, link, click open website, there it is, and I can now resize that to fit whatever size I would like. I can then move that over, say, here. I can also click on random name, and I can put in some different names here. For that, I then click choose, and I then spin the wheel like that. So let's say this name has come up, and then I could then ask that uh, child to then uh, talk about this particular word, or it could be an image, etc. You get the idea. And there's other things you can do as well. You can add in uh, dice if you want to do some dice activities or text option or drawing option or a stopwatch uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's classroom screen. There's also uh, another recent um, tool that came out, which is called uh, Spinner Wheel, which is this one. Uh, as you can see, I've got an animated GIF here uh, to show you how it works. So it's similar to Wheel of Names, but you can have uh, up to eight wheels on the same screen at the same time. So in this example, again, I've used um, the uh, name picker option. In the second wheel, I've got individual emojis. In the third one, I've got three emojis per section. In the fourth one, I've got a, um, a, uh, a sentence starter like at the weekend I or in the summer I or what, what have you. And then on the fifth one, um, I've got different images which you take from Unsplash in order to create your speaking prompt and you've got some different links here to give you some other ideas on how you can use this in the languages classroom uh, you can also have it going um the, the the answers that all come up they can either come up uh, vertically or horizontally if you prefer okay here is um, a document which i wrote uh, last year around speaking homeworks and exam revision you can access it via the google doc link at the bottom here and it gives you lots and lots of different ideas on how you can uh, practice listening and speaking skills, as well as giving audio feedback, which um, you should find useful. Flippity.net is another free tool, uh, which is based on a, uh, a Google Sheet. So you go to each um, activity type, you click on the instructions, it explains what you need to do. You need to uh, create a, um, a Google Sheet based on the template that they give you. You then add in the different uh, items into that, uh, Google Sheet, and then you can then generate the activities based on that. And there's a whole range of activities you can create. For example, Flippity Randomizer, Flippity Name Picker, Flippity Quiz Show, uh, Flippity Manipulatives, and so on and so forth. So that's really, really nice. And I'm going to give you a flavor of some of the ways in which you can use this. So this is the Flippity Quiz Show. Um, you just click on the link here, which will take you to the example. You click on the instructions, and you simply, as I said, copy the template, and then you can add in uh, any question, any answer that you would like. So a good way of practicing um, a whole set of different ideas over, say, um, uh, uh, six weeks or a whole year of study around a language. Great way for pr uh, promoting retrieval practice as well. 
this is another one sort of based on a hangman type of activity. So you put in the individual um, words in the Google Sheet, and then it will then generate this snowman activity. So then the students have to guess the different letters as a whole class activity. Might be better with younger ones, that one, I would suggest. This is the, um, the um, randomizer that I talked about already. So you can just uh, spin the wheel, and it will then pick one item per column, and it will then appear on the screen. Uh, like this you can also you have a little white box here which you can't see in the screenshot but if you click on that then when you spin the wheel the answers will appear nice and live to the middle of the screen as a sentence which is uh, really cool to see this is what it's based on this is an example of a sentence builder whereby you've got the four different columns here all you have to do is populate them with your own content and then it will then generate um, uh, many 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 different random sentences based on the content you put in this uh, sentence builder so really useful for practicing speaking and writing. Uh, this is um, some, these are some testimonials from different teachers who are using a Flippity Randomizer. So as you can see, uh, you've got primary uh, languages, Alice Smith School here, talking about using it for generating vocabulary. Uh, Miss B. German, it's at a department in the West Midlands in the UK, using it for time phrases, pronouns, and verbs. Uh, Jade Redden, who's talking about um, a video that Mike Elliott created, who's at a department in the South of England, um, and essentially what he was suggesting is that you can record your screen a bit like as we did with Flipgrid earlier. You record your screen while spinning the wheel and each time an item comes up, a student then as a homework task has to uh, pronounce the sentence which comes up and then translate it into, um, into their mother tongue. And that works really, really nicely, I think, as a way of practicing speaking at home. Uh, this is uh, my friend, Mrs. Bellacat on Twitter, and she... Uh, here has done some step-by-step -step guides on how to use Flippity manipulatives to practice, sorry, Flippity um, randomizer to practice ideas in the target language as well as for translation work as well. So that's also useful. This is the, the video clip which I just talked about uh, by Mike Elliott. I haven't got time to play this now, but you would just click on the link and you'd see exactly what it is that Mike is suggesting, which I've already talked about. So uh, that's uh, that's some homework for you there. Uh, here's some other ideas on how you can create your own uh, flippity uh, manipulative activity. This is uh, whereby you, in fact, let me just show you this live. It's probably going to be better if I click here and I just quickly show you it live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, flippity like this. I'm going to go to where it says manipulatives and click instructions. Uh, and then I'm going to click here where it says copy this template. So I've made a copy of this template by clicking here. And then you can see that what's going to happen now is it will then generate this uh, this uh, sheet like this. I can now click on the first item like that. I can now uh, drag over all of these here and delete like that. And likewise here and delete that as well. Let's just get rid of that as well. Okay. And then I'm going to write in a sentence such as I... went to the cinema. Now I'm doing this as individual words, but you could do them as chunks if you wanted to. And then here I'm gonna go back to uh, Vokaroo, which uh, I now need to load again. This, and I can actually record my voice saying the following. I went to the cinema. So I've done that, click save and share, copy the link, go back to my um, Google Sheet, and I'm gonna paste in the link like this. And then I'm going to click the file option, share, and publish to web. OK, I click publish. This is the same routine with all of them. I publish that. I then click get the link here. That's my link. I click on it. And here's the activity. OK, so as you can see, I've got the audio here. I click on the audio like that. And let's have a listen. I went to the cinema. And then I have to then put that into the correct order. So I went to the cinema and then you'd have to take a screenshot to show that you've done the work correctly and you could do that using a quick share screenshot which i talked about already and share it with the teacher so that's a simple way of doing listening practice asynchronously for free okay let's carry on this is uh, whereby uh, a teacher jerome Noges, has put in a youtube clip into flipping manipulatives and he's also color coded some of the items so all the uh, quantities, for example, are in green and the verbs are in uh, purple. And again, you have to then just drag and drop the uh, slides or the, the the tiles into the correct order like that. 
this again is based on a sentence builder. This is by Eleanor, D Eleanor Diaz, who's teaching Diaz on Twitter. So she's got five different audio clips and the students have to put in the chunks into the correct order. So a good way of practicing listening through chunking. This is um, another um, languages teacher up in Edinburgh, Sonia Fedrizi, who has uploaded an audio file, created some chunks, and then the students have to then listen to them and put them into the correct order based on what's said in the audio. Uh, you can also make a thrifty board game as well. This is Sarah Bell, um, who is the head of department at Inverclyde um, Academy. And as you can see here, she's uh, made a, um, a, a flippity board game, uh, which she did as part of a tilt webinar for us recently. So there's a step by step guide on how she did that. Uh, if you want to practice uh, pronunciation in Google Docs, a nice way of doing that is using voice typing. So this is what you do. You simply click on the tools menu in Google Docs. You select voice typing. You can then choose the language that you speak in, in, in which case here I, I've chosen French, but obviously you could choose English. You then enable the microphone, you click on it, you then speak in that language, and it will then uh, make your voice turn into text, which is really useful. That's in a Google environment. In a Microsoft environment, you've got the dictation option. So this works in Microsoft Word Online. You simply click on the dictate option. You then click on the, um, the cog here. You can then... Uh, customize it, you choose the language, you enable your microphone, you then um, click on it to start uh, listening to you, and then you then speak into that language, and it will then turn your voice into text. So both of those are free ways in which you can use your voice as a way of uh, reducing the amount of um, um, uh, use of the mouse that you have, and you can just use your voice, which is great for practicing pronunciation. Another idea is in a Google Docs environment is to do what's called live writing. There's a, a little blog post here that was written a few years ago now by Kelly Merrick, who's um, now a senior leader um, in, a, in a school, but is also a languages teacher. And she just goes through on the idea of how to set this up. The idea is that you have a table here. You have the names of the students in the first column. In the second column, they have their text, which they're writing. And you, in real time, are giving feedback to the students on what it is that they need to do to improve. Uh, and then as a result of that, they're then changing their text in real time based on your feedback. So uh, a really, really nice idea, I think. And you could do exactly the same thing, say, using Class Notebook in a Microsoft environment. Talking of that, this is how you can make your own collaborative online PowerPoint. Uh, so you just make a, a PowerPoint. You then make it available to anybody to edit. Uh, in your class, you then make a template on each slide, which is the same. And then the students then know exactly what it is that they need to do. And they can all work individually on their own slide. You can see here that it's got the initials of the different students to show that they were working on their own individual slide. If you had two icons next to each other, it would mean they were working together on the same slide, which is not necessarily what you want them to do. So that was posted by L West uh, MFL. This is a YouTube clip uh, that was created by Joe Pickering, who's Pixie Jojo on Twitter saying how you can set up this type of collaborative PowerPoint to encourage collaboration uh, and to give uh, whole class writing opportunities. This is, again, Jane Bassnet, who's created a Loom uh, recording, again, showing how to set up the same type of activity, uh, which works really nicely in a remote teaching or hybrid teaching context. Uh, I'm now going to talk a little bit about Moat. Uh, Moat is a, uh, a Chrome extension, which uh, has been around for a while now, about a year and a half or so, I think. Uh, when it first came out, it was absolutely amazing for giving audio feedback in different comments within Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Classroom. So you can see here, for example, that the little uh, purple circle has appeared with a, a white M in it. And all you have to do is click on that, and you can record for free 30-second uh, uh, moats, which will then appear in that particular Google Doc. Now, for free, uh, it used to be that you had unlimited moats, but as of this month, January 2022, uh, you're now limited to 20 moats per month, which um, is a bit frustrating, but I understand that they have to do that in order to make their uh, company viable financially. So what I've done is I've upgraded um, to the premium account, which works out about £40 for the year, and that means that you can then have unlimited moats. So in addition to being able to leave audio comments, you can also have transcription. So you could have that in a range of languages. So whatever you say can also be turned into a transcript, which is really useful. If I go on to the next slide, you'll see that you can also um, add audio uh, directly into um, uh, Google Slides as well, which um, uh, is really, really simple and easy. Here's an animated GIF to show you 
um, how that works. So what you do is you click on the moat icon here. This was created by Jake Miller. You then record your uh, audio by clicking on the icon in the middle of the screen. It will then add your um, audio into the slide and you can choose whether it plays automatically or on a click. And as a result of that, it's a great way of promoting speaking and audio feedback at the same time. So that's also really, really useful, I think, from the point of view of uh, promoting uh, speech um, in languages. OK, uh, recently as well, they've added the option to add Moat into Google Forms. So, for example, you can have now a listening comprehension activity whereby you record your audio by pasting the link in the description in the Google Form. And then you can also have audio answers as well. So it could be multiple choice, A, B, C, D, E, with different audio responses there as well. So that's also really, really useful and all part of the Chrome extension. Earlier, uh, You can also create your own audio QR code. So when you record your moat, if you go to the moat extension, you click on the icon in the extension bar, uh, and then you click on activity and engagement, you'll then see that all the moats are there. You can then click on the share option and it will give the option to export your uh, moat as a QR code. And as a result of that, you can use that for, say, uh, oh, uh, audio QR code treasure hunts, for example, uh, plus other ways of giving audio feedback by sticking the QR codes in a student's book, for example. Uh, there was an event back in August 2021 called Motocon, which um, features two sessions of three hours each from educators from around the world showing how you can use Moat in interesting, creative ways. So I'd really encourage you to have a look at those because lots of those ideas are very relevant to how they can be used in the languages classroom as well. OK, uh, whiteboard.fi is another fantastic uh, tool for uh, formative assessment. For those teachers who were um, wanting to use mini whiteboards in the classroom when we first went into the pandemic, um, I always recommend that they try, they try at whiteboard.fi, which allows you to create uh, your, your teacher board. And then each student gets their own individual board. They can't collaborate on each other's board. They only can write on their own board. And what they then do is they can then draw, they can write text, or they can add images. You can also take an image and push it to all the boards in one go, which could be a, a type of template you want them to then fill in. But it's really, really good for sort of question and answer, grammar practice, um, uh, storytelling, and so on and so forth. So you could say, for example, what did you do last weekend? And they all draw a picture, and then they have to then say what that picture means in the target language. Uh, here are some comments from different uh, teachers. For example, Miss Ganzorn saying, thank you again for whiteboard.fi. It's the highlight of my lockdown. I think my year 10 will be forever grateful to you for it. So that was really lovely to see. And you've got some other lovely comments there as well. Here's a tutorial by uh, Valerie David McGonnell, who's based in Ireland. And she's gone through step by step using the free presentational, presentational tool called Genially, just going through how you can use uh, whiteboard.fi in the languages classroom. Uh, here also is um, a couple of blog posts. They're, they're quite old now. One is um, sort of eight years old. The other one's nine years old. And it just shows you how, uh, from two practicing languages teacher. One is Samantha Decker. The other one is Claire Hampson on how you can use mini whiteboards. And all you'd have to do is replicate the ideas just in a digital context in whiteboard.fi. And just the thought, I hope you found this session useful. Um, if you would like to consider booking me to uh, do further webinars for you, do let me know. Here are 18 example sessions that um, are all around technology and how they can be used in the languages classroom, either uh, uh, for remote teaching or hybrid teaching or face-to-face -face teaching. There's something for everyone there. Do have a look, and I can design something bespoke for you if you're interested. And here is the short URL for the presentation. So feel free to scan that uh, QR code or to share the link with your, uh, your other uh, contacts um, here, there, and everywhere. And um, I really hope you found the session useful. And thank you ever so much for listening. Do stay in touch if you'd like any further support. Thank you.